Hey, special educators, I'm Jennifer from Positively Learning. Welcome to the Special Educators Resource Room. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to save time and streamline your work. That's why this podcast was created, to give you the systems and solutions you need to get your time back. Tune in for tips, tricks, and tools that will help you manage your workload and make the most of your time. Whether you're brand new or experienced, all are welcome in the Special Educators Resource Room. Co-teaching. Be honest. When I say co-teaching, how does that make you feel? Hey, Special Educators, this is Jennifer from Positively Learning, and you're listening to Episode 6 of the Special Educators Resource Room. All right, I feel like no one's talking about co-teaching. Yes, we probably have all sat through the undergrad course, or maybe it was a PD, all about the six co-teaching models. You remember the one teach, one assist, team teaching, parallel teaching, all great information, but it doesn't really capture how co-teaching looks and feels day in, day out in the inclusion classroom setting. So let's dig in. So who am I? to be providing tips and tricks on co-teaching. Well, I'll be sharing my own experiences. I split my time between providing services as push-in in the co-teaching inclusion classroom and pull-out, which was in the resource room setting. And I'm also going to be speaking from my heart. I have many years of co-teaching experience and there were lots of ups and downs. In fact, my very first year was down right rocky. And that's the nicest word I could come up with. But as I grew and learned more and had more experiences, I captured some of that co-teaching magic. And if you've ever had that magic, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's when everything clicks. And once you experience that, you continue to work together so that you could capture it again and again. So for this episode, I want to take on the role as instructional coach, working with a brand new co-teaching pair. So I have a special education teacher and a general education teacher, and let's say that they're going to be co-teaching together for the first time ever next week. These are the six tips I would share with them. So the very first thing I suggest doing is sitting down and getting clear on students' needs. And as a special education teacher, you can provide a lot of background knowledge. You can share about students' goals and accommodations and their strengths. And the general education teacher can provide that clear vision of where learning is going. And together, you can get on the same page of how you're going to improve student learning and meet all students' needs. After you're real clear on that, Then I would talk about your different roles and responsibilities in the classroom. It is a complete myth that co-teachers should be doing the same thing at the same time. It definitely does not look like that. Yes, there might be some overlap, but you also may have very different roles, but you're grounded in the same goal of meeting those students' needs. So this will help make sure that your lessons are aligned and you're both aware of what each other is doing and why. All right, so that's number one. And number two, I'm going to ask you to throw that out the window. Number two is to be flexible and open to change because even if you have those wonderful plans, we just know that it doesn't always work out that way. If you can stay open-minded, that can really help prevent some frustration. So for example, if you have a whole group setting and it's just not happening, you can easily pivot and pull small groups. It's okay because effective instruction can look and feel so many different ways. And what works with one group of students or one day may not work the next. So being flexible and open to change. So step number three is all about differentiation. It is a must-have in the inclusion classroom setting. There's such a wide range of abilities and individual needs. Now, special educators, this is where we shine. We have so much background knowledge and experience, and we can really help our co-teacher. We can share ideas that work best for students who receive services and inclusive practices that will reach 
all the students in the classroom. So don't be afraid to advocate and share your ideas. Now, number four, when I think about this one, I'm thinking, boy, this really could have been number one, or maybe this is so important. It could have been sprinkled in all six tips because number four is communication. Communication is essential. In fact, when things go wrong, you can probably pinpoint it back to communication. So I'm encouraging you, if you're having a difficult time, to reach out to your co-teacher. And the same thing goes for when things are going well. I'm one of those people that, even though I don't love it, I will bring up something that's difficult so we can find some resolution, but I tend to ignore when things are going well. I rarely stop to celebrate. But that is such a team building experience because you're both going through this together. So keep the lines of communication open where you can help each other out. You can continue to improve your relationship. It feels a lot like a marriage. And co-teaching is a bit of a balancing act like marriage. So it's important that both teachers are just checking in with each other on a regular basis so that we make sure we're still on track and the focus of student learning is still at the forefront. Well, this next tip builds right off the last one. Tip number five is to evaluate regularly. Once you have the communication routines in place, I want you to add checking in to evaluate what's working well and what needs tweaking. If you're checking in on a regular basis, you're going to be able to quickly identify those areas, make improvements, make adjustments, and that's going to be so important. When we don't check in regularly, that's when things start to fester a little bit. You probably know what I'm talking about. All right. And the last tip is to have fun. I just don't feel like we allow ourselves to have that much fun. And yes, teaching in a co-talk classroom is a lot of work but it can be fun as well. So enjoy the time you have with your students. Enjoy the time with the teachers you're working with. These are the moments you're gonna remember long after you leave the classroom. And I am definitely speaking from personal experience. So what did you think of those six tips? Was there anything that you would change or add? Co-teaching can be a successful model for instruction. When both teachers have the same goals and are really flexible in their teaching, And of course, communication is key. I want to invite you to check out the show notes. In the show notes, I'm going to put some links. One is to a blog post sharing these six tips plus those six co-teaching models. It's a great reference tool, plus there's some visuals. I also am going to link up a co-teaching binder. It has all of those printables to set up and get started on the right foot. If I was an instructional coach, this is what I would give to brand new co-teachers so they could get that plan of action. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you for episode seven. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'm dying to ask, what'd you think? Be sure to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. You can find the show notes and links for everything mentioned in this episode at PositivelyLearningBlog.com. See you next week for more special education solutions.